going to be talking today about uh, honeycomb sandwich structure. Good morning, my name is Portia Peters, and today I'll be presenting my research on semi-active vibration suppression of honeycomb sandwich structures. And I conducted this research under the guidance of Dr. Minsuki and Dr. Onoda at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, as well as my USC advisor, Dr. Stephen Nunn. And my outline for today's presentation is first I'll go over the introduction and the broader impacts of my research, um, followed by the experimental setup, results, conclusions, and finally my acknowledgments to thank those that made this research possible. But first we'll start with the introduction. The overall um, practical application for this research is for the aerospace industry. Um, but in particular, this is focused on satellites and um, rocket launches. But it can be applied to any industry where vibrations are negatively affecting the results. And overall, we're looking at the power flight, flight phase of the launcher. And during this um, phase of the launch, there are several vibration, um, vibration things that are going on that are negatively affecting the performance of the satellite, as well as the electrical so our goal is to relax the vibration environment. And by doing this, we can improve the reliability as well as the reduction of development costs. And there are three main methods of uh, vibration suppression, active, passive, and semi-active. And with active, it requires an external power source, but a negative effect of this is that it's unreliable and often unstable. With a passive method, you're, you're using the use of um, damping materials, which adds weight to the structure, which is a negative effect for an aerospace application. And then our final method is a semi-active approach, which is somewhat of a hybrid between the two and what this research is focused on. But when choosing a method, we have to decide between these um, practical application problems that affect the methods that we decide. We have to rely on reliability. There's a weight constraint since um, it is an aerospace application. There's a restriction of configuration space as well as a power resource. So when we focus on semi-active vibration, we chose this one because it controls the parameters in the system without using any external energy, which is a definite bonus for space applications. And it's completely stable, unlike active methods, but it ha also has a higher damping performance than passive methods. However, one drawback is that it has a lower damping performance than active methods. So our question is, how can we get the best of both worlds and use this by increasing the damping performance? And the answer is what's called energy recycling semi-active methods, which actually extracts the vibration energy from a structure. And rather than dissipating the energy, we actually reuse that energy to suppress the vibrations. And this method is powered by what's called a piezoelectric material, which converts strain energy into electrical energy. And when these materials are bonded onto the structure, um, they can also be used as an actuator, a sensor, and a transducer. And the way this works is the strain energy from the vibration is converted into electrical energy, which is then recycled to control the force. And this is working because the transducers are connected to a circuit, which is switched on and off according to the phase of the vibration. And this damps the material. And this is working through um, the circuit. It's actually reversing the charge and drives the transducer against the vibration. And so that's how we get the energy recycling approach. And overall, the scope of this experiment, our purpose with this particular experiment is to quantify the relationship between acoustic damping and vibration suppression when we're using this energy recycling method. And our hypothesis is when you suppress the vibration, you will also reduce the amount of noise transmitted through the structure. And our first goal for this is to actually define that relationship. And after that, we would like to apply this method to an actual uh, satellite model. And the final goal is to get this method applied to rockets that are launched into outer space. So now we'll talk about the experimental setup. In order to maximize the amount of vibration suppression through this semi-active method, we have to decide where is the optimal position to position these piezoelectric materials on our material. And we did that through modal analysis. And we can see here from the result that we're targeting the first axial mode of our material, which occurs at 280 hertz. And the piezoelectric materials that we are using were the PZT ceramics, and the dimensions were 40 by 10 millimeters with a half millimeter, half millimeter thickness. So these are very small structures. So by adding this to our material, we're not adding um, any significant additional weight. And here you can see from our sample preparation, we're using honeycomb sandwich structures. 
and the core was a Nomex material, which has a meta aramid structure, and the face sheets were constructed from glass fibers. And here we have our sensor in the middle, and we position our piezoelectric materials um, to suppress the first mode, and our accelerometers are measuring the amount of vibrations that are being suppressed. And the test apparatus we use for testing this involve a subfloor source chamber, which is the primary use of um, detecting noise reduction. And we have our speakers that are exciting our honeycomb sandwich structure, as well as an inside and outside microphone to measure the amount of acoustic damping. And we place our piezoelectric transducers on the top, as well as the bottom of the panel. So when the panel is excited, we're making sure to activate and measure all of the modes. And so for our block diagram of the experiment, overall this is how all of this ties together to get the energy recycling and semi-active method. Our speakers are exciting our panel through sound waves, and one transducer was selected um, as a sensor transducer, and that is sending a voltage through the AD converter, which is sending it to the computer. And within the computer, there's software that's calculating the switching timing. And the switching timing is then sent through the converter back to the circuit. And the circuit is connected to the group of transducers that's being controlled by the switching timing. And by the switching of back and forth through the circuit, that's how the vibrations are being suppressed by recycling that energy. So overall, that's how the energy recycling uh, source happens. And we collected uh, some data. We had a lot of data from this. We had, we're measuring the acoustic pressure from the inside and outside microphones. We also had the sensor uh, to give us the voltage that controls the system. We have the five accelerometers, which are giving us data about the, the vibration and how the panel is moving, as well as the piezoelectric transducers. And while we were getting data from that, that doesn't actually affect the vibration suppression of the system. That was just allowing us to know that the method was working properly. And the data that we collected from this was voltage versus time, which also indicated how well the system was working at suppressing vibrations. The power spectrum density, which measures the sound intensity, so we were using the power spectrum density data to measure the amount of acoustic damping that was going on in the system. We also had our frequency response function, which measures the dynamic response of the panel. So between these two uh, measurements, that's how we came up with our relationship between acoustic damping and vibration suppression. We also had our samples. We had one sample, which was our control sample, that didn't use the uh, semi-active method. And then we also had um, several samples using different circuit configurations because we found in past studies that the way the circuit is configured has an effect on how effective this method works. So we have a group of transducers um, that are connected all in series. And as we move down, so 10 groups, 5 groups, and 4 groups is indicating the amount of transducers that are connected in parallel. And those circuits are then connected in series. So as we move to a smaller number of groups, we're moving more towards an all parallel configuration. And also, we noticed while taking data that when you're moving closer to an all-series configuration, that our measurement system had an effect on the results. So we measured that both with and without the measurement system to see what that effect was. And now we'll move into the results. So first, we measured the power spectrum density, which is measured in units of watts per hertz. And then we have our uh, frequency response function, which we took the magnitude of, so it is unitless. And so we have our control sample at the top. And we can see as we move down the page, um, first with the series, with the system, without a system, we can see there's definitely a difference in our results. And our target result is you want a smaller number for both your power spectrum density as well as your frequency response function. And what that means is the amount of sound that's transmitted through the panel for your power spectrum density, you want that to be smaller. You want your panel to mitigate as much sound as possible. So that's what we're looking for. And the same thing with the frequency response function. The small, a smaller number indicates that your panel is vibrating at a lesser degree. So um, we see the difference between with and without a system. However, if you block out the systems that use the measurement, we can see there's a clear trend as you move from an all-series configuration to a configuration that's closer to an all-parallel. And we have um, a significant a, a change here. We had almost 14% uh, change in acoustic damping, which is a si significant amount for this application. And for uh, vibration suppression, we have almost a 7% decrease in vibrations when we're uh, in an all-series configuration. And the trend decreased as we moved toward uh, 
a more parallel configuration, which I'll discuss in a later slide. 